Um, well, the, the show that starts at the Mini Gallery kicks off on Tuesday the 17th of October. Uh, well, the group is a, a group of figurative artists which I have discovered um, through painting and living in London for the past 30 years. Uh, some of them were at college with me. Some of them I, I sort of came across in previous exhibitions that I've, that I've shown with at the Menia Gallery. And um, about sort of April time, I thought that it was a good idea to get some figurative artists together to show the male figure in, in the gallery. Okay. And um, because we have the similar subject matter, which is underrepresented in, in you know, contemporary London art scene, I thought we would have a go at it and you know, show it to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the partial legalization of um, homosexuality. If you go to any um, art fair or show or museum or gallery, you'll find a, a lack of male flesh, a lack of the male figure. And most curators will shy away from that because of the taboo about um, the male gender. It's much, you know, you're much more likely to see tits, hips, and bits. Um, and uh, I, it, it's something that has irritated me for a long while. And during my degree show, which was sponsored by a, a, a company with Christian values, uh, they are basically told not to put any uh, naked men in it. Uh, uh, you know, there is still a taboo about the male nude. If you go to any adult education um, college, you'll find that if there is life drawing available, it's always a female nude because of safeguarding policies. Well, the, the painting you see behind me um, evolved out of two occurrences. The boat um, came from Battersea Park Boating Lake. Um, I used to work there ages ago. And the figure, well, that's um, somebody I met in Richmond Park who was sleeping rough. He managed to get out of Chechen and had managed to somehow get across Europe and um, end up in the UK. Okay. Well, certainly when Martin approached me, I thought, well, it says the male perspective, and, and I, I'm female. But I think it's, it's really important that uh, a woman uh, is acknowledged as being a, 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 a subjustified interpreter of the human form as well. In this series, I'm looking at the body almost like a piece of geography. This is why the kind of colour scheme is quite earthy and sky, in order to make people associate it with part of the landscape, part of the world, part of the whole cycle of molecules and atoms in the world. Um, I, like, I like it when it shows the anatomy, it shows the muscle, shows the, the bones, the structure of the body. Um, I find it difficult when the two extremes actually, uh, the, the, the too thin, or the, the two overweight, uh, because I, f I feel that, that both of those hide the essence of the person. From when I was in art school, uh, we had male models, which is very unusual in those days, and uh, quite often they had to wear little posing pouches. Uh, but increasingly, uh, I, as my work's developed and I've chosen what to do, it's become much more about the human form, and it's not just men, although I'm one of the few women that really concentrates on the male form. I find that the reaction to my work tends to be quite critical uh, because I'm producing images of the male form. I do it as a, I suppose I'm a bit bolshy. I do it because I think that people should just get bloody over it. <laughs> um, because the human form, whichever gender, we all know it or we've seen it. There's nothing magical about it. It is just amazingly as it is. And that's what I want to get across, that this is the body and this is how it is. And it's beautiful as it is. Even though in classical Greek and, and, and Roman uh, art, there was a lot of 
pride in the male body and portrayal of it through art, that suddenly uh, became quite a, 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 a no-no in terms of uh, what's acceptable in, in the art world. I think a lot of that had to do with the church and the church commissioning things. And yet still, the woman's body was okay. My favorite piece is in the exhibition is one called Oblivion. That's a picture of my son. <laughs> one of my best models is my son. Ever since he was quite young, he's been perfectly happy to pose for me. And there's a kind of uh, um, no, uh, an understanding between us. Uh, this one is actually of uh, uh, an ex-lover uh, who, ah, I mean, it's quite, quite sad. He was, he was killed, he was murdered three years ago. And, and the images that I'd painted of him suddenly became transformed and became iconic for me. And so I, 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 this one is, is really important to me. I'm an uh, abstract representational painter, uh, and I'm really interested in people, you know, who they are and what they do and how they deal with things in life and situations. And I love characters, really. I just really love characters about, you know, people. I think, ma yeah, male figures I've always been drawing. And to be honest, uh, I mean, you know, being a male myself, it was always easier to draw a male figure straight away just because I kind of you know the structure of the male uh, figure and I like yeah. a physique that I don't know I guess can create different shadows in, if the light captures it or different kind of interesting looks if it's twisted or straight or if it's uh, stretched or bent or you know any kind of position really. So the, the paintings in this show they're not just about the male figure but it's kind of showing the different sides of being a male so it's not all the big macho side of being a man is about you know the different things that guys can go through I think that it's it's something that you know the male figure it can mean so many different things in so many different you know uh, you know what it can mean in different time zones and different uh, uh, cultures and different places around the world so yeah I feel I feel like that it's not just a one thing if it's just a nude male it's not automatically anything to do with um, you know, being gay or straight, it's something to do with being, uh, having sexuality, it can be just the nude male, you know. So at the moment I'm focusing more on maybe obscuring the figure a bit more, so maybe leaving parts out or maybe laying paint over it, trying to make the viewer work out what it is they're looking at in a way. So if you do a full-on portrait, or a full-on figure for that matter, I feel like that it's not as exciting as, um, if you were to like try and figure out what it is you're looking at. Uh, so this one, it was someone that I met and he was, um, he had gone through a, a few tragedies in his life and um, he'd, he'd gone through, a, uh, he, he basically was explaining to me on how like he's gone through this trauma and yet he's, he's, the rest of the world is carrying on. So he's in plain sight and that's why it's called plain sight. He's in plain sight and he's going through all these things and yet the world is unaffected, everything carries on, no one notices him, he kind of feels invisible and that's why I kind of was erasing part of his face just because of that feeling. Uh, I feel like this show has got some amazing talent and great artists and I, I'm really thankful and proud to be a part of it. So, yeah. uh, I'm originally German, came here about 20 years ago and uh, ever since have been pursuing both pathways, the art and the design pathway. Uh, Art, I'll cover painting and drawing mainly, and in design, stage and costume design for ballet, uh, theater, and contemporary dance, and opera. I've been drawing and painting the male figures pretty much since 15, 20 years, and um, my main concern is the male body, but also movement, and I'm really interested in performers and in athletes, and uh, I'm intrigued by that. And I'm drawn to athletes and performers because they have a good physique and uh, it's much easier to draw. <laughs> I always work with the life model. I don't really believe in reproducing from photographs. I do it at times when it's absolutely necessary because let's say it's a commission, but um, I think that the 
the interaction with the model is absolutely relevant to achieve something amazing and to see something 3D in front of you, someone who's posing and you can just go around a little bit and have a look and you understand the body much more, you learn from it, you know, and it's sort of almost like a dialogue that happens between the sitter and the, the artist and um, that dialogue simply can't happen if you work from a photograph. The painting behind me um, I just finished at an art residency in Germany uh, in um, Neustadt an der Weinstraße and um, that was a model that was there for me and he was working with me a couple of days and this is basically the outcome. Uh, there is another artwork here in the show which I spent half a year working on um, which is about the central uh, theme of loss of home and uh, at that time I was kind of at loss. I was pretty much homeless. Uh, I had all my belongings packed up and and in cardboard boxes and the painting is layered with cardboard and uh, it has a lot of lot of work uh, and, and sorrow in it that, that I felt at that time. I even shaved my head for a year and all that hair is mixed into the paint. Um, um, an artist working pretty much since the 1980s. I started off in in Belgium and then I moved to England to study. Uh, I studied in London and I now live in Manchester. I've been drawing self-portraits for about five or six years now and the self-portraits they are partly autobiographical and partly taking on different persona. So the autobiographical ones they're very often in, in a clown makeup and the clown stands for kind of being rejected, being taken for a ride, being, you, being abused, maybe also being a little bit cheeky. So it's taken on a number of different persona and it's originally the face paints are the same as Ronald McDonald. So it's also that kind of thing where people, you know, have to work on a zero hour contract and, you know, being exploited. There's also about fighting back, maybe. Often mixed media, and, and in this piece, uh, it's ply and acrylics on canvas and spray paint and stencils. So it's a mix of, mix of different medias. In some other pieces, I use a lot of different fabrics. It's, um, it, they're not just underpants, they're gray underpants. They're not even particularly new underpants. It's a bit grubby and a bit sort of caught out, maybe. I didn't want to paint myself in the nude because it, I think it's funnier. And since I'm since I'm photobombing Leonardo da Vinci, it's going to have to be pretty funny. I think this is my favourite piece because it shows a lot of different media and a lot of different approaches, and and I think it reflects my interest in art history. It, it kind of is is a is a comment on on the art world, so. The, the lorem ipsum fake Latin that's in the picture, it, it, just, it, it just stands for the senselessness and the, the purposelessness of the way people talk about art. So it kind of, and the, the picture is called The Emperor's New Clothes because it's about the nonsense of, that prevails in the art world. It's, I think it's as important for me to have the the guy sweeping up the floor of the gallery liking my work as it is for the director of the gallery to like my work. I think it's, it's kind of cool that I'm in this because I wouldn't really be expecting to be, you know, featuring in a, in a show that is about the male figure and how it's painted. But then I realise, of course, that a lot of my work is about the male figure and how I paint myself. Various of my works here. There are. Um, this is a dancer series, portrait of a dancer, and the dancer itself. Actually, in the end, just describe the hands through the gesture of the dancer, and seeing what was happening there. When I started these paintings, I didn't know what was going to happen. So the idea was the theme of dancers, but it actually became the hands. What were these hands doing? what is the mood in these hands. For me they're a bit like uh, music in these parts, a bit like um, uh, later Mondrian but just in the, in the fingers and the pulses of the, the hands. So it wasn't quite what I was expecting 
but it was something that was coming out of the way the paint was applied to the canvas. I've done a lot of self-portraits that are over the other side of the exhibition. So there's a self-portrait about um, myself as a ghost, which is um, using very faint veils of paint um, as, a, as a dead person. And there's also one that's on the way there that's called uh, self-portrait as Achilles. They're primarily all painting, so the drawing comes out of the painting. There's very little actually drawn. I'm actually working on uh, faces within cityscapes at the moment. Cityscapes, uh, the, the city at night, yeah, which this is kind of part of. This is part of, and this is where these colours have come from, cities, you know, the lights in cityscapes. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about the, the way paint application, that for me is the, probably the main thing and that it all comes from intuition, it just, it just arrives, just keep painting, ideas come, the next part of the paint comes, uh, they're very, very quick paintings, yeah, they're, not, they're not, thought out, not thought through.